So I want to try something. I want to see if ChatGPT can teach me Next.js and React. A lot of people have done videos like this, and I've even done one myself, where they ask ChatGPT to do a task for them in software development, but it's too hard of a task. It's a task that is geared more towards senior developers. I wanted to do a concept similar to that for this video, but I'm not gonna pretend like I don't know what I'm doing. So I have experience with JavaScript and TypeScript using Angular, and so I wanna see if ChatGPT can help me write a little simple application using Next.js. Now, I don't know very much about Next. I've used it a little bit in a side project just kind of for fun to learn what it's about, but I don't know React very well. I don't know Next very well, but I want ChatGPT to show me how to do it. I'm going to give it a situation that would kind of be geared more towards a junior developer. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create a page that's gonna list a whole bunch of resources that I get from a REST API. And then depending how that goes, I may ask it to create a detail page so I can view a single record. And then if it's going well, I may also ask it to do a edit form so I can do CRUD. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started and see how it goes. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new application. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna create the application following the instructions from Next website. And then after that, I'll bring in ChatGPT to start filling in pages for me. So first I'm gonna say npx create next app. All right, so it's created the app. I'm gonna go ahead and cd into that folder and then open it up in VS Code. And here is my brand new application. Just to make sure it's gonna work, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. All right, the app is created. When I go to localhost 3000 after running npm run dev, the app is up and it's working, so that's great. So now I wanna get ChatGPT involved. And for this test, like I said, I wanted to create a page where I can list a bunch of resources and I'm going to use this website called JSON Placeholder. This is essentially going to give me a fake REST API that I can use to do the CRUD for our application. So what I wanna do is I wanna give the structure of this object to ChatGPT and tell it that I want to create a page that's going to have a table that will list all of the items I get back from this API. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start off with this post object. It has four properties, ID, title, body, and user ID. I've hopped over to ChatGPT, I've created a new chat. I am using ChatGPT Plus, so I have access to the model four. And so I'll go ahead and give it a prompt. All right, so here's the prompt that I've written for it. I have been tasked with creating a few pages in the Next.js application to view and edit data. I would like you to help me getting them to work. The Next.js app is using JavaScript and the source directory for pages. First, I need to create a page that calls a REST API and retrieves a list of post objects. This page needs to list all the items in the response in an HTML table, and each row should have a view button in the first column that will later be used to click on and view the details of the post. This is the JSON structure of the post object, and this is the endpoint to get the data. So let's see what it gives me. To create the page, do the following steps. Create a new page called post.js inside of the source slash pages directory. Import the required libraries and components and create the post component. Use get server side props to fetch the data from the API when the page is requested. Render the fetch data in an HTML table with a view button. Here is the code for the post.js file. So it creates a function that takes in a posts prop, creates the table, does a post map. And then down here at the bottom, it has a get server side props, which uses fetch to go get the posts. And then it returns a props object with the posts inside of it. So I do believe that this is correct. One thing that I forgot to tell it though, is that I'm using Tailwind CSS. I'm gonna tell it to recreate this exactly as it is, except use Tailwind CSS and make it a little bit prettier. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna copy this code. And back in our app, it said to create in the pages folder to create a file called post.js. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna paste in what it gave me and I'll save that. And then back in our application, I'll go to slash posts and it gave me an error. So it says invalid link with an anchor tag child, please remove the anchor tag or use legacy behavior. So this is a situation, I don't I don't know what Next used to do, if it used to be normal to have an anchor tag inside of it, but maybe ChatGPT thought this is how it worked because it's, you know, the data that it has is a couple years old. So I'll go back into the app. I'll just go ahead and remove that anchor tag. But I do wanna take this class name. I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna put it up here on the link. I'll remove the anchor tag, go back to the app. And you can see that it actually is giving me a page that pulls all of those posts. And so this did a pretty good job. All right, so now what I wanna do is I want to ask ChatGPT to make it so that if I click on this view button, it'll take me to a detail page that will list the details of this object. All right, so I've gone back to ChatGPT and I said, that works, great. Now I need a detail page so that I can click the view button and go to a page that shows the details of a post. Can you create it for me? 
All right, and it has completed. So here's what it did. It said, sure, create a new file called square bracket id.js inside the source pages post directory. And this is interesting because it told me before to just create a file in the pages folder that was called post.js. And I do know from looking at the documentation that Next.js uses file-based routing. And so I can just create a post folder and move that post file into that folder. It should work just fine. And it says this dynamic route will match the, any value for the ID and render the post details for that specific ID. Here is the code. So it has a post detail with the title, the body, and the user ID, and then a button that goes back to posts. It is using that other same format, so I'll have to fix that. And then it gets server side props. It gets the ID from the context query and then uses fetch to go get the post. And here's what's interesting is I didn't tell it what the URL was, but it's following the standard REST format of URLs, and so it knew that the post's ID goes after the post's endpoint, so that's pretty cool. And then, similar as before, it returns its props with a post object inside of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that code. I'm gonna go back into VS Code, and under Pages, I'm gonna go ahead and create that posts folder. And I'm gonna move that posts file into that posts folder. Go ahead and say yes. And I wanna save this. I just wanna make sure that this works. And so it does give a 404, which I thought maybe it would. Uh, I assume this needs to be index.js. Okay, that's, yeah, that's correct. So, so the main page in the folder is called index. I also just noticed a really small typo in the instructions from it. It says to create this file in a post directory, but down here in its link, the reference is back to posts, which is what the original posts file was called. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as posts and not post. All right, so inside posts, I'm gonna do a new file. This will be id.js and I pasted in that file that it gave me. I need to change this, so I'm gonna copy those class names again, put it in here, and remove the anchor tag, and I'll save that and go back to my app, and if I click on this, it gives me a 404. But I can see here in the URL that this is post and not posts, so in our posts list page, I want to update the link so that it goes to posts slash ID. I'll save that, go view the page, and there you go. So again, it's pretty ugly because there's not much here, but it does have, this is the title up at the top. This is using the lorem ipsum to generate content. And then the body, the user ID, which doesn't really mean anything in this case, and then a button to go back to posts. So let's make sure that works, and that does. So that is doing what I told it to do. Now I wanna go one step further. Can I tell it that I want to be able to edit this and then send a put request to the API to update that object and then go back to the list page? So I'm gonna go into ChatGPT and I'm gonna ask it to do that. All right, so here's my prompt for this. I said that is working, thanks. Now I need to be able to edit this post object. Can you recreate this post detail page? But now I need to be able to edit the title and the body fields. I specifically told it that I only wanna edit the title and the body and I don't wanna edit the user. And then I said there should be a save button that will make a put call to the API. And if it's successful, automatically return back to the list page. There should also be a cancel button, which does not save and just goes back to the posts list page. All right, it's done. Let's see what it gave me. So it says to add edit functionality, go edit that page to include form elements for editing the title and body fields. So it did only edit those two fields, which is what I told it to do. That's pretty awesome. And then it's gonna add event handlers for saving and canceling the changes. So here's the updated code. So it's going to use state to, for the title and the body. And now there's a save changes event handler, which is going to use fetch again to make a put request, passes the correct object for the body. And then if the response is okay, then it's going to go back to the post page. So that's perfect. There's also an event handler for cancel changes, which also just goes back to the post page. And then the updated form, edit post. There's an input with the value of title and on change for set title and then a text area for the body. So this is actually pretty interesting that it kind of assumed that the body is going to be a bigger field and it automatically made it into a text area. And then same thing, value is the body on change set body and then save button now calls save changes and then a cancel button, which I assume calls cancel changes and it does. And then same thing before, get server side props, that's, this hasn't changed. So this does look like it's gonna work. I'll go ahead and copy this, go back into the app, I'll go into our ID page. I'm gonna copy all of this in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and save this and I'm gonna see what it does. So if I click view, then now it says edit post. Here's the input and the text area. I'm just gonna put one, two, three on the end of each one of these fields and click save. 
And I did go back to the post page. I do want to go in and check the network tab of Google Chrome. So let's do this again. I'm going to open up developer tools and then I'm going to do that again. So do one, two, three, one, two, three, and then click save. And let's see what it did. So first I sent the options and it set the put. It did send it to the correct endpoint. Let's check the payload that it had one, two, three on the end. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. So that is working. And the response from the API has one, two, three, and one, two, three on it. I don't know what this is. This must be something that Next does automatically. It Then it went and it made a git request to underscore next slash data slash development slash post JSON. I know that Next does a lot of caching and kind of magic stuff on the back end. And I'm assuming that since this is, you know, a development folder, it must be caching API requests. And since it knows that this is a repeated API call, that it's already saved that response into this JSON file. If that's what that actually is, that's really cool. I'm just looking at the response here. The response is an object with page props and then posts. Okay, so it does look like it's taking the JSON that came back from a git server side props call and it's put it into a JSON file. So that's pretty cool. Looks to me like I might have to go play with Next.js a little bit more. This is pretty awesome. I think ChatGPT passed this test. You know, like I said before, this isn't a very super complicated thing, but if you're a junior developer and you're given a task to go create a couple pages where you can do some CRUD on it, then this seems like it's uh, a pretty viable option for you. That's not good career advice. <laughs> so if you're a junior developer, don't please don't do this all the time. I would make sure that you understand what this is doing. Otherwise, you're never going to advance your career. If you don't know what you're actually doing, if all you're doing is copying and pasting things from ChatGPT, then uh, your career might not last too long. But if you really understand this and you use this as a tool to help you do things quicker, this is pretty awesome. Most of the stuff I do for my job is internal business applications. And most of the time, this is exactly what we do. We have a list page that lists a whole bunch of things on the page. Um, users can you know, search and filter and order. They can select the thing they want to see and then go in and edit that object. Oftentimes these forms are quite big. And so usually these pages are just mundane tasks. We have to go in and do it. And so the fact that ChatGPT can get something that's working and can get most of the way there to me is very impressive. And this is a tool that I'm going to use in the future to make it so that my job's a little bit easier, you know, to help out with these mundane tasks. Let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comments. This was kind of a fun little thing I decided just to do for fun. And I learned a few things about uh, Next.js. So that was pretty neat. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And thanks for watching. And I'll catch you later.